Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the Social Dot In Account. This is Pradeep, and on this episode of the Social Media Weekly, we're talking about Google telling us about the page experience score. We're talking about Facebook taking down one of Trump's ads finally, and we're talking about WhatsApp payments again. Finally, let's get started. So the first story we have for you today is about Google telling us about the page experience score. So this actually happened towards the latter half of May, and it's only going to roll out in 2021. But there is a link in the description right next to that like button, which talks about the various parameters that Google looks into when ranking a website on the first page of organic search. The first one is called Largest Contentful Point or LCP and it basically says that it has to be under 2.5 seconds. That means there should be a time in your website's load time when a large amount of content has loaded and this point should happen less than 2.5 seconds into your website's load. The second one is called First Input Delay and it has to be less than 100 milliseconds, meaning there should be a point in your website's load time within 100 milliseconds when a user can interact with your website. And the third one is called cumulative layout shift and it basically says it has to be under 0.1 meaning as your website loads it cannot shift more than 10%. Other metrics are fairly common, including mobile friendliness and safe browsing, which means your website has to use HTTPS. If you haven't started implementing any of these for your website, we highly recommend that you start right away. Our next story has to do with Google launching a new experimental app called Keen, which is a ripoff of Pinterest. So Google has launched an Android app as well as a web-based app when you can go in and enter a particular topic. For example, you enter dog training and it will suggest additional topics, maybe dog training videos, dog training resources, and dog training products on Amazon. And then it will automatically gather information from the web and Amazon into a Pinterest style board. You can then add or edit content on this board and you can invite family and friends to add content to the board. It's an advanced version of Google Alerts and I hope that they come up with more original ideas in the future. The next story has to do with Facebook finally taking affirmative action on President Trump's posts. So this has been going on for a while. Twitter took down President Trump's tweets and when Trump posted the same tweets to Facebook, Facebook did nothing. This caused a walkout and they were widely criticized. Everyone hoped that there would come a time when a line would be crossed and Facebook would be forced to take down Trump's posts. Well, apparently now that time has come. Trump on his page and on the vice president's page has put out up to 80 ads which have the Nazi symbol which is an inverted red triangle which was used by the Nazis to denote political prisoners in concentration camps. And it turns out that that is too much for Facebook. They have taken down all of those ads. To be fair to Trump, apparently this was an Antifa symbol in the UK in 1980 but in the US they have been using the double flag. Our next story has to do with Facebook's acquisition of Maplery. Mapillary is a crowdsourced street level imagery startup which helps build location data and maps with information sourced from the crowd. Now Facebook has acquired them because obviously they are jealous of Google Maps. Anyway, Facebook has also bought Scape which is an augmented reality startup which was building something called Visual Positioning System and it has also bought Atlas.ml which was an open source database for machine learning papers. You can clearly see where Facebook is going with this because location data is right up there with browsing data as most valuable information on a customer. Our final story of the day has to do with WhatsApp finally rolling out digital payments in Brazil. This is different from their UPI based payments in India because the Brazil one uses Facebook Pay. What else would it use, right? Apparently, they partnered with Banco de Brazil and other banks and the Visa and MasterCard card networks to roll out digital payments in Brazil. Now, this has both person-to-person -person payments, which is free, as well as person-to-business payments, which are charged at 3.99%. Obviously, Facebook is testing out this model, and once they're happy, they're going to roll it out all over the world. That's about it for this week's episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Drop your comments on what you think about WhatsApp payments in the comment section down below. As always, please go over to YouTube and subscribe to the social dot in account. Ring that notification bell so that you never miss a video and we will see you guys in the next episode.